we are good. All right, thank you, Brendan, and welcome everybody to the March 8th, 2023 full board meeting of Manhattan Community Board 6. My name is Kyle Thied and I'm the chair of CB6. This meeting is called to order at 7.01 p.m. And tonight we're joined by Secretary Steve O, District Manager Jesus Perez, and Assistant District Manager Brendan Burt. As a reminder, New York State law now requires all community board members to have their cameras on and their first and last names displayed from the time the meeting is called to order until the time the meeting is adjourned. If your camera is not on and your name not properly displayed, you cannot count towards quorum. To conduct an efficient meeting tonight, we will observe a few ground rules. First, no one may speak until granted the floor. Please first raise your hand through Zoom and wait for the chair to recognize you. Then you can unmute and make your comment. The chat function should not be used for CB6 business or questions about agenda topics. Any remarks should be made on the record by raising your hand through Zoom. Chat should only be used to alert us to any technical difficulties you are having or to state in writing information such as an email address or link that was already stated aloud on the record during the meeting. To the members of the public, if you wish to give remarks during the public session and have not already registered by filling out the form on the CB6 website ahead of time, you can register to speak in the public session by using the Q&A feature of Zoom and posting your name, your affiliation, and the specific topic you wish to speak about. This must be completed by 7.15. Again, board members, please have your Zoom cameras on and your first and last names displayed during tonight's entire meeting. The agenda for tonight's meeting was distributed ahead of time by the board office, was posted online, and appears on the screen before you. If there is no objection, we will adopt the agenda as stated. So board members, if you object to adopting the agenda, please raise your hand through Zoom. Seeing no objections, the agenda for tonight's meeting is adopted. Well, I'll take roll call, Steve. Okay, we will take attendance by roll call. Board members, you can unmute yourselves and answer present when your name is called. Okay. Majed Abdul Samad. Present. Kyle Thide. Present. Neil Barclay. Present. Arn Barrett. Present. Elvi Barroso. Present. Claire Brennan. Present. Jim Collins. Jim Collins. Jim is out tonight. Okay. Jonathan Der Derrico. Present. Stu Desser. Present. Michael Devereaux. Michael Devereaux. Beatrice Disman. Present. Jason Fromwitz. Present. Thank you. Eric Goldberg. Eric Goldberg. Adam Harkey. Present. Sadie Howard. Present. Paige Judge. Present. John Keller. Present. Nadim Kilani. Present. Abigail Kuzmark. Abigail Kuzmark. Sandra Leftoff. Present. Jason Littman. Present. Anton Molnar. Anton Molnar. Sandra McKee. Present. Richard Mintz. Present. Or just Nayar. He said it'll be a few minutes late. He apologized. Okay. Kevin O'Keefe. President. And I believe Eric Goldberg is amongst us. Eric Goldberg? Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Okay, marking you as present, Matt Roberts. Matt Roberts. 
Larry Shire. Present. Ann Seligman. And Seligman. Uh, I'm, I'm here. Oh, okay, marking you as present. Lou Sapersky. Lou. Seema Shaw. Present. Sandra Sherrod. Present. Aisha Siddiqui. Present. Letty Simon. Present. Hannah Singleman. Present. Susan Steinberg. Present, but I also see, did you get uh, Jason Littman and Anton Molnar? I see them here. Uh, I have Jason Littman. I don't have Anton Molnar. I'm here, my screen froze while you call me. Okay, uh, marking you as present, Anton. Uh, Mark Thompson. Present. Okay, Gabriel Terzo. Present. Brian Van Nieuwenhoven. Present. Matthew Weitraub. Present. Laura Wong. Present. Ronnie White. Ronnie White. Ronnie has the flu. Okay. So he's not here today. Okay. With four, uh, 47 in attendance, we have a quorum. Can you mark Mike Devereaux present, please? Uh, Mike Devereaux, you are now marked present. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, we have asked our elected officials to send over their reports ahead of time so that we can compile them. You can find all the reports that were submitted on the CB6 website. The link to the reports was disseminated ahead of time to all board members and the general public, and for your convenience can now be found in the chat. I will call on each of the elected officials who have RSVP'd so that they can take questions from CB6 members and the public about their pre-submitted reports. Each elected official will have one minute to field questions. If there are no questions, we will move on to the next elected official on our list. If an elected official has a time sensitive matter to report on that didn't make it into their pre-submitted report, they will have three minutes to do so. During this part of the meeting, we will also hear from government agency representatives who have requested to address the board tonight. And we will start off with assembly member Epstein. Thank, thank you, Kyle, and thank you everyone. Um, you know, I hope everyone is doing well, you know, as we move towards spring. Um, the only thing I want to get people updated is kind of on the, just on the budget moment, like we're, we're going to be releasing our one house budgets next week and just to let people know that they really, if they care about any of the issues that the government's talked about, the housing plan, environment, this is the time to have contact with our offices and other elected officials offices, you know, in the next three weeks, the state budget is going to be done and you know, all the issues that we've been talking about will be dealt with. And there's a lot in our report that if you have questions, happy to talk about any of those issues. Great. We actually have a question from Rich. Rich, go ahead. You have the floor. Yes, thank you. Um, my question is just, is there anything happening either in regard to the budget or elsewhere uh, in terms of legislation to support the governor's uh, plan to increase housing production? So uh, people know that the governor rolled out a uh, housing production plan, which would, you know, we basically build about, in the last 10 years, built 400,000 units. Her proposal is to build closer to 800,000 units and has a plan. Part of the plan is the bills I've been pushing or my basement bill in New York City and a larger uh, ADU accessory dwelling unit uh, legislation, conversion from commercial to residential. And there's some things that people really like. I know people in Manhattan and I, in, my, in our district are really opposed to lifting lifting the 12 FAR cap. But there isn't a lot on affordable housing, unfortunately, and nothing around preservation, like good cause, which would preserve from tenants and tenancies from rent increases. And so we're really trying to make sure that issues like good cause, uh, more affordability is part of this plan. And those are the conversations. We, we, we know we have an affordable housing crisis and we know we need to build more. We also know that we need to preserve the housing we have. And I think that's the mix of what we're trying to do. And hopefully that will come out with our one houses next week on. Yeah, I mean, the context is I'm trying to figure out if there's something specific we should be supporting in terms of legislation. Yeah, 
Yeah. We you can put out your, yeah. the basement bill. Yeah, our basement bill would be great. Good cause. Eviction would be amazing. Forcing the governor to do something about affordability. I mean, her housing plan includes lifting the 12 FER cap with any any commitment of affordable housing in those new buildings if we went from commercial to residential. So like a real commitment to affordability would be you know really instrumental because I'm not sure building more units in Manhattan alone without any requirements of affordable housing will help any of us to okay. stay gonna, in this community. Th thank you. I'm going to take this offline and contact your office, but that's great. a great start. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. We also have a question from Susan. Susan, you have the floor. Hi, Harvey. Um, Hi, thank you for mentioning good cause eviction. It, it seems to me, maybe I'm wrong, that Governor Hochul is uh, rather hostile toward the concept. Well, certainly the real estate industry is. But if you're gonna, if one is going to be serious about uh, fixing a housing crisis, it seems that what you need to do is preventing people who have them from becoming homeless. So, you know, I know the fight is still on. Yeah, well, thank you for raising that, Susan. I think we have a real opportunity to help the over 400,000 New Yorkers who don't have any rent protections at all, people who live, who are on this Zoom and people who live in our community right, can see 40, 50, 60% rent increases without any protections. Good cause would help those neighbors of ours. And it's really important. So if you all are interested in doing this, it'd be great to have your support on that, as well as the other issues that we're talking about around basement apartments. We lost 11 New Yorkers a year and a half ago. And if we could unit, legalize those units, we could have potentially save their lives. We have a real plan to do it and we just need to get it done this year in the budget. All right, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Happy actually, holidays to everyone who's celebrating and thank you, Kyle, for uh, uh, doing all the work you do. Appreciate it, you as well and to your staff. Thank you. And Joanna, if you're on, uh, could you add your uh, contact information to the chat? Hello, will do. Thank you. And we'll now move on to Robin Forrest from the mayor's office. Robin, welcome. Hello, how are you? Thank you for having me. I just have a couple of brief announcements that I wanted to make. Um, if you don't know already, this summer youth employment program uh, has been launched and uh, it is open to people between the ages of four and 24. Uh, those who are 14 and 15 uh, go into something a little different. It's called in-service learning, but they apply through the program and they're paid. So the, um, the pay rate is $15 an hour and the um, deadline to apply is the 31st of this month. You can find the application on nyc.gov, S-Y-E-P. I'll leave my contact information if anybody has any questions. Second, um, I've spoken about it before, but I just wanted to uh, say it again. Uh, the mayor has launched a program called uh, Breaking Bread and Building Bonds. And it was something he um, had done in Brooklyn as a way to combat hate and foster understanding. So he's decided to bring it to the entire city with the idea of having dinners of 10 to 12 people uh, from different backgrounds to try to get to know one another with the objective being to try to use it as a way to understand one another and combat the rising hate in our city. Um, we uh, launched the first dinner last week. A number of us uh, were served as hosts for the dinner. And we are looking for people who would like to participate as either hosts or participants. The mayor is hoping to have a thousand dinners by the end of the year. He not himself, but the program. And um, they will be hosted by people like all of us. And the idea is to bring a diverse group of people together to talk, people that might not otherwise have any opportunity to get to know one another. So if that's of interest to any of you, again, that's on nyc.gov and um, Breaking Bread is the, uh, is the name of the program. So if you have any interest, we'd love to have you join us. And that's it, thank you. All right, thank you very much, Robin. Uh, seeing no further questions from the, oh, Sandy, do you have a question? 
Um, yes, I just, I wondered if there was any update on the city of Yes, um, if there's been more detail issued or or what the status is of that, of the whole program. I do not, but I will have an update for you at the next meeting. Great, thank you. We're You're going welcome. to be discussing at our land use meeting some of the, the issues. And okay. we'll Are hope to chair, get as many details as possible. Do you chair land use or? I, I, I do. Okay. So when is that meeting? Uh, March the 27th. And we're okay. doing a introduction with the, the housing and homelessness as well. Okay. I will uh, try to be in touch uh, with uh, Jesus or um, Brendan in advance Great. of that. And Great. Thank you. Information. Okay. We can do it offline. Thank you so much. Okay, great. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move on to Peyton from Senator Gonzalez's office. Peyton? Hello. Um, I don't have anything to add beyond the report that was submitted, so if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Fantastic. Any questions for Senator Gonzalez's office from the board or from the public? All right, seeing none, if you could add your contact information to the chat, um, people can follow up one-on-one -on -one with anything else. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Audrey from Senator Kruger's office. All right, we'll get back to Audrey. Um, Pat from Council Member Powers' office. Hi, everyone. Uh, apologies, I'm having some connection issues, so if I cut in and out, my apologies. Uh, I have nothing to add to the report we submitted. Uh, if there's any questions, be more than happy to take them. Um, and if there's anything I can't answer here, I'll be happy to take it offline and respond to folks. All right, thanks so much, Pat. Any questions for Council Member Powers' office? Uh, Sandy, go ahead, I'll go for and, and not really a question, but I really wanna thank um, <clears throat> the, the Council Member for the dog run at, at uh, the New Wave Pier was damaged and it's been repaired. It's back in use now today. So thank you so much for making sure that happened. We really back appreciate it. Back in use already? Already, already. Yep. Absolutely remarkable. It's <laughs> remarkable, thank you. I mean, the Parks Department and Keith's office, I think worked hand in hand to get it going. So all our canine friends are appreciative. Thank mm -hmm. you. We wouldn't have known without our eyes and ears. So thank you guys too. Um, and go ahead, you have the floor. So uh, speaking of eyes and ears, this is actually um, a comment for question for suggestion for both uh, Keith Powers office and for uh, the borough president, um, both of whom are clearly working on scaffolding issues and thank you very much for doing that. And, um, Definitely I long guess, overdue. Yeah, and I guess, and it's, you know, it's not the first time people have tried. And I, I guess um, one of my uh, suggestions would be, in obviously there it's important to crack down on people, but if you wanna use like the eyes and ears of the people here and on the communities, as you are building the program, to kind of, um, you know, in, improve the enforcement of this. Mm -hmm. If you can engage the community and saying, hey, these guys haven't been working on this for months. Don't know if the project is complete, but the scaffolding is still there. Um, it's very hard, speaking as somebody who has tried to do this, it's very difficult to find out when a project is actually done uh, all you can really see is when the permits are like permits end. Yeah. Um, so again, just you hear what I say. Thanks. Absolutely. No, I'll, I'll take that back to our legislative team as well as the council member and share that with them. I think that's definitely a fair point. Um, we experience it ourselves when we're looking into, you know, trying to get the scaffoldings down in certain areas. So it's definitely something that needs to be addressed. Uh, All right. And yeah. and I don't know if the borough president, because I know um, he also is really working. He and his staff are working on this as well. Yeah, it's not, so if you can, a lot of work into this. Right. All right. Thanks, so we'll Patrick. Go, we'll go to uh, Gabe next. Gabe, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. I'm just wondering what the council member Powers' position is on the streeteries bill. 
on the excuse me. Uh, streeteries, the uh, seasonal removal of streeteries uh, for parking. Um, I apologize. I, I I don't know off the top of my head, but I can definitely check in with our legislative team. I'll put it in my chat info, or my info in the chat as well, so that you know we can connect offline. I, I'd really appreciate if you could reach out to me via email. We can set up a time to talk, and I can ask um, you know Keith directly and our legislative team as well. All right. Thank you very much. Seeing no further questions. Um, Absolutely. Yep. We'll now move back to Audrey. Audrey. You yes. Know? Apologies, I'm sorry, I'm substituting for Justin and you guys have this wonderful unique system here where about the other community boards were always on. So uh, this is a great, great uh, process. Just one thing to add, um, as you know, Senator Kruger is the chair of the finance. She'll be leading the one uh, house and then she'll also be leading talks with the governor's folks in terms of the final budget negotiations. We do want you to know that tomorrow evening on Zoom, the Manhattan delegation of the Senate will be hosting a budget hearing here for our, all of our constituents. It's on Zoom and it's your chance if you aren't able to get to Albany or if there's a particular issue that you're concerned about in the state budget and you wanna give it one last uh, voice, uh, do join us. I don't know, I think that these should have been sent the information to the community board already. I can certainly put the information on the chat. That's it. Thank you so much, Audrey. Thank you. All right, we'll now move on to James from Assembly Member Boris's office. James, welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just had a couple like really quick additions to our report from last week. Um, one, uh, because I've been asked about it a few times and our office has, uh, just so everyone knows, um, if you haven't seen the latest reports or anything on what happened, the really horrible event that happened in Sutton Place um, on Sunday, just to reiterate, and we posted this on social too, we've been in contact with the 17th precinct and they wanna make sure that everyone knows that all of the first responders were okay. Uh, the chemicals were confined to that van and they were, it was just a household mixture. Um, so it doesn't, did not pose any threat to the community. Um, and switching gears a little bit then, just also wanted to update in addition to our report, uh, we've submitted a bill that will extend the petitioning deadline this year only because as it currently stands, the final few days, like those three days to file for petitioning, uh, coincides with the beginning of Passover. So we've submitted a bill to extend the filing deadline um, to April 10th. We'll let everyone know if that passes um, and then if there's any questions. All right. Thank you, James. Not seeing any questions. Appreciate it. All right, and last but not least, I'm Eddie from Council Member Rivera's office. Eddie, welcome. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Um, I have no updates. I encourage you all to sign up for our East Side Tree Bed Survey. Uh, check out our events page on our council website, and I drop my information in the chat. Um, let me know if I can be helpful with anything. Great. I see a question from the public. Um, okay. Can we let uh, Tevin speak? Hi, no question for you, Eddie. Um, I'm just from another elected office. I'm from Congressman Goldman's office, which we have a few blocks okay. of your CD. So just Perfect. don't want you to forget about me. <laughs> we didn't have you on our RSVP list, but um, you're welcome to have the floor right now, Tevin, from Congressman Goldman's office. Yeah. Hi, thank you so much, everyone. Um, so just wanted to say very quickly, my name is Tevin Williams. Uh, we do have about like four or five blocks of CD6 which are the Southern pieces of it. Um, I'm sorry for the miscommunication. I registered earlier today. I don't know what kind of happened on behalf of a federal agency or federal office. Um, I'll be leading our Manhattan office once it opens, hopefully a federal building at 290 Broadway, but just wanted to say hello to everyone and introduce myself. I know you've been working with John Blasco, who's our deputy chief of staff and district director coming from our great assembly member, Harvey Epstein's office. I'm coming from Senator Hoyleman's office. Um, and I'll be senior staff, so I am uh, happy to take any questions, help with anything on CD6, and I'm happy to be working with all of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, welcome, Tevin. It's a pleasure to be working with you in this new capacity. Um, so we're very excited to, um, to continue the relationship. Thank you. All right. Um, we don't have anyone else, so let's go to the public session. Jesus, do we have anyone to sign, uh, signed up to speak in the public session? 
Yes, we have two pre-registrants. Uh, the first one is Mr. Michael Hirschman. He is the CEO of Solovia Group. Uh, he wishes to address the board tonight on Resolution 3A on the casino that's been in the news recently. Mr. Soloviev, you, I'm sorry, Mr. Hirschman, you have three minutes to make your remarks. We have enabled your microphone and you may begin your remarks now. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, community board members. I want to introduce myself. My name is, is indeed uh, Michael Hirschman. I'm the chief executive officer of the Soloviev Group, which is the owner of a 6.7 acre site located on First Avenue between 38th and 41st Street. I wanted to very briefly speak to you before your meeting to say our team is very eager to hear from all of you in the coming months as we convene a series of community stakeholder workshops regarding the design and program of our new proposal for the development of our East River site. We're at the beginning of this visioning process, not at the end. I hope you all had an opportunity to review the letter sent to the board ahead of this meeting, but I wanted to touch on some key points. Over the past year since securing zoning approval for this parcel, the needs of this community and New York City has, as a whole have evolved in ways that demand a bold new vision. Given the expertise on this board and in this community, we have formally requested in this letter that CB6 partner with us on community visioning sessions with key stakeholders. Our concept for the updated plan includes creation of affordable housing. It also presents an opportunity to reconfigure the public open space in a dynamic, accessible and sustainable way, creating much needed green space and incorporating a robust waterfront component. An updated plan would also replace a large office building with a venue for gaming, arts, entertainment, and a museum developed underground beneath the project's public open space. We're very excited to introduce you as well to our partner, Mohegan, one of the most respected gaming and entertainment co companies in the world. Now, look, we know that there are many questions and concerns about a potential gaming use of this site. Important considerations regarding things like traffic, sanitation, public safety, and quality of life all must be discussed in great detail with local stakeholders. We are sensitive to these issues and eager to address all of them with you in a transparent and collaborative manner. In closing, our team firmly, firmly believes that this long undeveloped site has the potential to be activated in a profoundly beneficial way. Our project team has been now assembled over recent weeks, and we're hopeful that CB6 will consider working in partnership with us to deliver on the full promise of this unique site. I will include my email address in the chat box. Please reach out to me with any questions or comments, and I want to thank you for your attention and time. All right. The next speaker on our list is Tanya Arias, who is president of her co-op board, which is in our district. She wishes to speak on the same topic as the previous speaker, the Casino Ferris Wheel Concept Project. Ms. Arias, we are enabling your mic right now. You may begin your remarks. You have three minutes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board and neighbors. I am Tanya Arias, president of the board at 45 Tudor City Place. I come to you this evening as a representative of and authorized by the board of directors of the nine Tudor City corporations. We represent almost 5,000 residents of Tudor City. We urge the community board to vote in favor of the resolution in opposition to the development of a casino in Ferris Wheel on the solo lot on First Avenue. We firmly oppose the development of this proposed project on the basis of its great unsuitability for the neighborhood. Its construction will adversely affect the quality of life and safety of our community. The obvious detrimental impacts are increased traffic, including tour buses, pedestrian congestion, trash, noise, and safety, amongst many others. 
Besides the fact that our neighborhood is graced by venerated landmark buildings, we also host one of the most important organizations on earth, the United Nations. This ill-advised proposal would sit literally next to this solemn and respected institution. There are far better suited locations for this project. The solo lot is the least suitable of all. I want to thank the chairman and this board for their efforts and tireless work for the benefit of our community. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to address you. Thank you, Ms. Arias. Uh, Kyle, that concludes the speaker's list for tonight. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move on to the minutes from the February 8th full board meeting, which were distributed to board members ahead of time by the board office. If there is no objection, we will adopt the minutes as drafted. Board members, if you object to adopting the minutes, please raise your hand through Zoom. Seeing no objections, the minutes from the February 8th full board meeting are adopted. They will soon be available on the CB6 website. Uh, I'll now move on to my chair's report. Um, I have a very quick one uh, since we have a lot of business going on uh, tonight. Uh, the first is that the emergency orders, uh, again, have been extended uh, to March 21st, so we'll remain virtual uh, and, of course, anticipate the month-to-month -month, um, extension of that. Uh, next, uh, I'm very pleased that uh, Jesus Perez was uh, uh, testifying on the board's behalf uh, in advocacy of the board's resos on meeting on Zoom at the uh, oversight hearing of the Government Operations Committee of the City Council. Um, it was very well received. Uh, many people asked for copies uh, of, of the, uh, the testimony and were in praise of our resolutions on this topic as well to uh, have a virtual option for community boards. Um, so very excited about that. And with that, uh, we'll send it over to Jesus for the district manager's report. All right, thank you, Kyle. Good evening, everyone. As Kyle mentioned, we have no fewer than 14 resos on the agenda tonight, so I will be very brief. Um, I'm happy to our report, uh, report that our search for a new staff member has come to an end. We have preliminarily offered the position to Brian Lafferty, whom you all know as our liaison to the Manhattan Borough President's Office. Uh, I've known Brian the entire time that he's been with the BP's office, and I've always been impressed by his work ethic and his professionalism. So I am very happy that he would like to uh, join us here at the CB6 office as the next step in his career in city government. Uh, for the benefit of our newer members, community boards are peculiar in, in that, uh, unlike other city agencies, when we hire staff, we must have a full board vote. So that is why the resolution is included on your agenda tonight. So um, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now hear from our treasurer, Adam Hartke. Hi all, uh, I too will try to be brief. Um, so no real changes to my last report. Um, OMB's budget summary uh, to our board uh, on March 1st, 2023 uh, shows that we have a balance of a little over $103,000, 103,000, <laughs> excuse me, $103,000 uh, with 133, a little over 133,000 uh, uh, spent or obliged. Uh, our current OTPS uh, budget uh, remains unchanged, and we have a uh, we have a remaining balance of a little over seventeen thousand dollars, with a little over thirteen thousand dollars spent or obliged. And that concludes my report. All right. Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, are we joined by the borough president tonight? Sion. All right, not seeing him. Yeah, so we'll just move uh, to our committee reports and resolutions. Uh, we have arrived at the committee reports and resolutions and a reminder that the same rules that we stated at the beginning of the meeting apply. So to members of the public, please note that during this session of the meeting, we only recognize questions from members of the board. The CB6 staff will now post a link to the digital ballot in the chat. Please click on the link or copy and paste it into your browser uh, and open the ballot. Select your name from the drop-down list and select your vote on each resolution as it is presented. Do not hit submit until later in the meeting after the final resolution has been presented. At the end of the meeting, please submit after you have indicated all your votes on your ballot. 
you will not be able to submit the ballot unless you vote on every resolution. If you plan on abstaining, please select abstain. The final vote counts will be announced after the second roll call. If any part of our voting procedure is unclear, please raise your hand through Zoom and we will address your question or please connect with Jesus and Brendan to help you with any other issues you might have. All right, and with that, we'll start with bylaws. Thank you, Carl. It really is a pleasure for me to bring the work of the committee uh, to the board. And I just want to go over some general comments uh, because everyone has had an opportunity to see the bylaws, which were distributed in draft form after our last full board meeting. In addition, uh, a number of comments, and I'll comment on that, were received by members of the board and people who have participated. So just to remind everyone that the chair at the executive committee on November 17th established the bylaws committee. Members were assigned uh, in the beginning of December and throughout since there had to be some substitutions uh, because of the death of one of our colleagues, the separation of another. And the people on the board is a mixture of experience. There are two past chairs of Sandro and Mark. There's experienced Pima, people, Seema and Adam. And there was a new person, Mara, Mara uh, that joined us. We started to hold our meetings on January 31st and we've been extremely transparent. We've had 10 such committee meetings in which board members have participated uh, in addition to the members on the committee. We received comments from the executive committee. We solicited comments from board members themselves and received over 30 comments. And we did some research on community boards throughout New York City. We found that the most reliable information that we had on community boards were those in Manhattan uh, the other boroughs didn't have all their information on their websites and their type of bylaws was not really complete. So there were a couple of issues that we looked at because we knew that this was going to be the issue, some of the issues we were going to talk about. One was the term length of a member officer of the board. And I'm going to stay with Manhattan here. In Manhattan, boards opted three to one for one year terms that were renewable. The month of the elections, again, Manhattan, five out of the 12 boards held their elections in November, and you're gonna see a pattern of our recommendations. The month of nominations, again, the same response of the five out of 12 in October. The month of selection of the nominating committee was in September. So if you look at it, by the recommendations that we're gonna be making, uh, we will be joining half the boards in Manhattan to have the same month of election, month of nominations, and month of um, nominating committee selection. With the draft bylaws that was sent around at the end of our last meeting, we set up an air table uh, for comments and we received 21 uh, separate comments on different aspects of it. Uh, at our meeting at March the 1st, we went through all those comments. In addition to other comments that were made publicly, as well as comments that were sent in memo form. There's just a couple of issues I want to clarify since they were reflective in the comments, some questions were asked. One of the questions was, if you looked at the bylaws, we removed mm -hmm. the fact of the treasurer preparing the budget. And the question was why? Well, we get a budget from OMB. The treasurer doesn't really prepare the budget. Second involved the secretary. We eliminated the secretary from uh, approval of full board minutes. Uh, the reason being the secretary basically uh, puts together the minutes and then they go to the um, chair and the staff in the community office, community board office before they go in draft to all of us. There were questions asked about, we had initially called it mentoring programs but we've called them now orientation and training programs of new members. The questions that were asked is, we've made responsibility for the chair and the first and second vice chairs, but what about other board members participating? And as we discussed at our March 1st meeting, everyone need, will participate. It's the question of getting volunteers to do it. We just want to make sure there was accountability in some offices 
to make sure we had orientation and training. We do have a, two issues that we will be referring to the executive committee. One of the issues that came up on our March 1st uh, meeting was eliminating any term limits. Uh, we did not take that approach. We followed what other boards did and what our past bylaws had. So that would have to be something for a new discussion. Also, we got into a discussion about voting uh, on final resolutions, whether you use voice vote, hand vote, electronic, and all of that. And we think that's something that we really need to discuss in the process. So those two issues will be issues that we will bring back to the board. So Carl, I'm willing to open this up to questions and I ask my other committee members to join me uh, for any response that we have to make. All right, thank you, B. Um, I see a hand from Susan. Um, yeah, the um, just a very minor cleanup, um, B on page nine of 12, three public under public session, 3D, the first line is a little, it's missing something. It's a little wacky. Public member of a blank shell. I see what you're saying. It says uh, public member of a, it, it should be public member shall not be recognized as a Okay. All right, we will correct that edit. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Sandy, go ahead. Um, and just, um, I wondered if you could help me understand. It's um, the top paragraph on page seven. <clears throat> it's about um, term limits, term, and it's just, uh, if a member chaired more than one committee, the time as chair of each of these committees is added separately toward the five year limit even if the terms were concurrent. If you could just, I, I'm just not sure I understand that, that sentence. What, well, we, one of the changes you see in blue was to make a sentence, make it more understandable. And it was the Oops. question of, <laughs> yeah, we had different language before. It was suggested that the language before wasn't um, understandable. What this was really to do is to talk about if you're a chair of a committee, and you're, we don't really know um, of chairs right now that are simultaneous committees, but what counts towards the five years? And that was the intent of this particular thing. And then the fact of being away from a committee chair and other assumptions. So we tried to clarify the language. That's what the intent is, is to define what the five years are. And Sandy, if you have any other suggestion on the language, please put it in chat for us because we've been playing with that language. We found that the language that existed in the original bylaws, which had this, by the way, didn't give us clarity on that. And just, just to clarify then, you are allowed to be chairs of two, a chair of two committees? Well, it, we had that in the bylaws. It never was changed. Uh, we kept it as it was, just played around with the language. But I don't know of any in my history where I've seen chairs of two committees. So the, the goal is that if you're a chair of one committee for two years and chair of another committee for three years, you've reached your five years. Your five year, absolutely. And okay, any other questions? All right, seeing no further questions, I'm gonna end the debate on this and we'll move it to a vote. Um, so please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 1A. And while people are doing that, I just want to thank B for her leadership on this board for running, as she mentioned, a very transparent process, diplomatic, long, arduous, detailed process. Um, thank you for uh, making me feel right about the decision to lead uh, to appoint you to lead it. Um, you did a wonderful job as the chair of this committee dealing with um, things that hadn't been updated in a while, dealing with things that have changed since the pandemic, which was the impetus um, for the creation of this committee in the first place. And very special thanks to everybody else on the committee um, for their contributions of experience, new perspectives, 
um, and thinking uh, innovatively and practically about how we utilize these bylaws um, to enhance the work of this board. So thank you all, uh, and especially to be. Yeah, thanks, Carla. And let me just echo what you said about the other committee members. They were long, arduous meetings, word by word. It seems like a couple of places we did not get the words correctly. We will clean them up. But having said that, everyone worked very hard with the goal of giving more clarity to our bylaws. So thank you for your comments. Absolutely. All right. And with that, I'm assuming you do not have a report. <laughs> I do not. Well, the report is basically, uh, Carl, that this ends the bylaws committee. And we will give the minutes of our last meeting to the executive committee for approval. Thank you so much. And I see a, a hand from Letty. Letty, go ahead. Thank you, Mute. Do we okay? Do we have to call the question or just go to vote? We didn't. Call I just went to vote. I, I ended the debate and moved it to a vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we'll now move on uh, to the next committee: Environment and Parks. Neil, go ahead. All right. Thanks, Kyle, and good evening, everyone. Um, just to start with our report. February was a very busy, busy month for the committee. We had a chance to get out and speak to groups and individuals who take care of the parks in our district. Um, I will start with Stuyvesant Square uh, and on the east side of the square. Um, unfortunately, there are needles that are being found on the east side of the square and there are students um, from um, uh, there are students that attend the school that are in the old Stuyvesant High School building, and so this poses a threat to the students. What we are looking into is working to have 15th Street close only during the school week or on school days for a small allotted amount of time, two or three hours, whichever the amount of time would be uh, for recess. We are reaching out to um, our contacts at the school and we will propose to have a meeting to discuss this idea. Um, going to the west side of the park, both the east side and the west side of the park, um, they have um, challenges with uh, rat burrows. Although I would say that um, Sheena Kaufman and the parks department, they should be commended because they have reduced the burrows from 320 to 41. Continuing on the west side of uh, the park, we are focusing on obtaining litter bin lids, trash can lids, and we are also working with um, Stuyvesant Square Park Association to get approval from the NYPD for the NYPD cameras or approval that the NYPD cameras are in fact needed once we have the approval, we will begin outlining a plan to obtain the funds to obtain the cameras. Also, where um, the challenge with the rats and both sides of the park, um, the parks department will continue to send exterminators there twice a month. Moving north in the district, we now get to Ralph Bunch Park. Uh, we are expecting more trees possibly in April. That's something we will monitor that closely. Um, unfortunately, there are also some uh, rodents that are living in this park. Um, we've spoken to the parks department and they will continue to diligently um, place exterminators uh, at the park twice a month. And finally, for Ralph Bunch Park, uh, there is um, a need for an irrigation system, but that is a long-term project. Um, a short-term solution that we are working on is having access to the fire hydrant so that we can water trees and flowers. So we're hoping to have access once or twice a week, and we are um, initiating contact with the ND, uh, I'm sorry, the FDNY. Um, the dog run, as has already been mentioned, uh, there was an accident which took it out of commission, but fortunately it is back and up and running again. Going to Augustus St. Gaudens Playground, we had a meeting about updates that will occur um, to the playground. We are in the very initial stages of 
um, the project. And I would just say for all of these, I would just like to thank uh, Sheena Kaufman and Steve Simon for all of their help going to the environment portion. Uh, of course, we do have the climate plan. And so next month, April's meeting, uh, we will begin to look at this in more detail, such as where composting bins should be located in our district and also where we can plant more trees in the district. And that would lead me into our resolution this evening. So our, our resolution supports the borough president's million more trees campaign and his goal is to plant 1 million more trees in the city by 2030. Um, the resolution that we have is essentially um, the model that was given to us from the borough's, uh, the borough president's office. So the only, I guess the only real update or something that we had to fill in specifically was our goal for our tree canopy by 2035. At this, kind of, at this time, our tree canopy is 18.2%, and we as a committee decided to bring the goal up to 30%, to set our goal for 30% by 2035. Um, as, I, as I stated, uh, this is a resolution. It's pretty easy to understand, and this resolution, I imagine, um, almost verbatim, will likely be supported by all community boards in Manhattan and ultimately all community boards in New York City. And so with that said, um, and also this, uh, the resolution passed in committee unanimously, and I hope everyone on the board will support this committee, uh, support this resolution. All right, we have a couple of questions. Uh, Susan, you have the floor. I was gonna call the question. Hold the question. Okay. Um, let me just see if anyone else has questions. Stu, is that a second or do you have a question? Just a very quick one. On the further resolved clause, uh, it includes the New York City planting trees on private land. Could you elaborate on that at all? One, one second, which? Uh... It's uh, the under further resolved. It's the first uh, bullet, I think. Okay. So you're asking the question about private lands? Right. New York City will be planting trees on private lands. I see later there's an incentive program suggested, but why is New York City planting on tri private lands? How does that work? Well, I think if there, if, uh, if you're noting that there's an incentive to do it, then we would include uh, the private plant, the private lands as ultimately a part of the goal to add 1 million more trees, because although it's on a private land, it does um, include, um, I guess, uh, adding the 1 million more trees. And it also does increase ultimately the city's tree canopy. So I, I think although it's on a uh, on private land, it still um, it still contributes to the tree canopy um, percentage. And just, and just to clarify, um, the initiative is not about doing it without permission uh, to, to build it on private land. It's that it would be, private land would also be included with this initiative that people with private land could also uh, be part of this. So I could see how that might have a, an issue. Did that answer your question, Stu? Yeah, thank you. Um, Eric, go ahead. Sure. I was just wondering if Parks has provided any update on the opening and I'm not sure of the exact name of it, but the stretch on the East River from, I guess, 23rd Street to 14th Street. I, I can see from my window, there's constant activity. It looks like it's getting close. Just wondering if it's gonna be opened by spring. Well, I, I haven't heard anything about that, but what I can do, I can take a note and I can reach out the parks and then I can let you know. Thanks. Appreciate yeah, if you it. also, if uh, you can just maybe just uh, chat me, I'll take your email. Great. Thanks, Neil. Thank right. you. And go ahead. You have the floor. Um, yeah. And this um, just might be a little bit of a clarification for Stu that 
is relevant for our community district is um, POPs, publicly owned or privately owned public spaces um, would fall in that category where of places where parks could plant trees. Again, as Kyle pointed out, like with permission, but it's just like that would count as private space. As, as privately owned space, but again, might be really relevant uh, for our for our district. Thank you, Ann. Uh, Sandy, you have the floor. Go ahead. And just uh, the issue of the that's the UC Coastal Resiliency Project that um, you were referring to, and we've had discussions. They came to us at the last committee um, meeting, and apparently, um, if it's Stabs at Cove Park that you're referring to. And there's concern about safety issues and it may not happen, um, for a while. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll let Neil know what happened at our meeting, but it has been part of our discussions. Okay, thank you. thanks as well. Thank you, Sandy. All right, seeing, oh, yeah, Maura. Yeah, just quickly, it looks like I should have pointed this out in the chat, but oh. on line 56 of the resolution, it, uh, states 2035, but then at line 62, it says 2030, so we should resolve resolve that if it's okay that they're different, or I believe they should be the same. Yeah, Neil, can you clarify? I believe that the goal is 30% canopy by 2035, but planting 1 million trees by 2030. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think okay. that sounds right. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right, um, seeing no further questions, uh, I'll end debate on this resolution and we'll move it to a vote. Um, so please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 2A. All right, and we'll now move on to Land Use and Waterfront. Thank you. We have one resolution, and um, it, we did alter the resolution just a little bit from what we discussed in committee, as um, the Soviet um, group has reached out to us now. So we removed the, the, um, the comment that we had not been approached at the time of writing of the resolution. Thank you, Are, Sandy. Oh. Any questions? Great, I see a couple of hands. Uh, Kevin, you have the floor. Yes, uh, thanks for giving me the floor. Uh, the solo rep uh, public comment claimed there was a letter sent to CB6. Is there such a letter and uh, has it been shared with CB6 members? I certainly have not seen one. Yep, so a letter was sent uh, earlier this week on Monday uh, to request a meeting with our team. Uh, we don't usually send those type of letters out to the board. Um, Sandy, myself, and the vice chair um, and the board office will be meeting with their team uh, to further discuss. All right. Well, today I listened to the February committee meeting. Uh, Sandy in that meeting said the biggest reason for tonight's resolution is that CB6 had not heard from Solo. Certainly not, no longer the case. Uh, mm -hmm. I think all voting members of CB6 should have ample time to review that letter, certainly beyond tonight. This is a major decision, everyone, about the largest undeveloped piece of private land in Manhattan. We should be doing more information gathering, listening, now that Solo is apparently ready to engage. All right, thank you. Uh, I'll move it to Brian. Next hand up. Thank you. Um, so I've been following along this proposal for a little while. Um, given that uh, news coverage of this proposal indicates that there isn't really much more in place than a computer rendering. Um, it's been hard to take it credible as a serious contender uh, in the race for these casino licenses, given the advanced state of the other applicants, including in Times Square and out at uh, Flushing Meadow. Um, note that uh you know just as the as somebody who's been on the transportation committee for nine years now um we have transportation issues in this district with the residential and commercial mix that we already have 
the idea of putting a regional and national and global attraction in that particular site with no other infrastructure upgrades and keep in mind that nothing that has come out of the Solovyev camp has indicated that they are willing to fund the sort of billions in rail and transit upgrades uh, to make sure that people wouldn't have to come in by car on First Avenue. Um, the idea that we would do this without any of that stuff being in place, that alone seems unconscionable to the users of this facility and to the neighbors in the district. Now note that um, it was reported today that uh, in city and state that before the state considers these proposals, they have to get sign off from community advisory committees appointed by local lawmakers, including the governor and mayor or county executive. Based on that, we cannot assume that people of our perspective will sign up for and be appointed to these advisory committees. We will have to proceed as if these committees will be friendly to the applicants as appointed by the politicians, fully locked on to gaining the license fees and overly optimistic about logistics and impacts. Because of that, this is our chance to get in on this before those committees are convened and before the machinery starts to move in favor of these proposals. We should not wait one more minute to state our concerns and reject this unworkable idea. All right, thank you very much, Brian. Uh, moving on to Jason. Jason, you have the floor. Uh, I just sort of had a question, and I don't know if anybody from the committee can address this, but I, I'm sort of split on on how I feel about this. Um, in that, uh, I agree with the concerns, and I support the resolution's position on preferring affordable housing here. Uh, but I also don't like the idea of this staying an empty, open lot in in the district. So I, I don't know if anybody can make the argument against the other side of that, which is why nothing is better than something there, I suppose. Yes, yeah, so I can provide some context for that. So the committee actually passed something and the full board passed something in January, February that a previous uh, plan had been approved there for uh, things that we had approved um, quite some time ago that addressed things like affordable housing and you know whatnot. Um, so the committee and the full board had asked that that plan be respected um, since that's what uh, the process had gone through last time. Uh, so that is the something uh, that you're talking about. So there actually shouldn't be nothing there. Um, the something is the plan that was approved and should have been followed um, many years ago. Right. Um, I can just add to that. Yeah, Sandy, go ahead. Yeah, um, my understanding is the previous um, proposal, it, it did go through a ULERP and it is for an office building. Um, we're foiling to find out exactly what was in the proposal. It's been a long time. But um, yes, I think everybody wants to see something built there. And this is, yeah, it seems like the, the um, information we've received, if the casino does not go ahead, they will go ahead with the original Euler proposal. That's and just, yeah, and just a reminder that, that something shouldn't mean anything. <laughs> um, Page? It's not anything, it's totally approved. Oh, no, 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 no not, not the 197. I'm talking about the casino now. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Yes, yes. What they have, we have the casino or what's previously approved in the U.S. Yeah. Paige, go ahead. <clears throat> All right. While Paige has um, fixes her technical stuff, Kevin, do you have a follow up? Because right, we have a lot of speakers, so I want to make sure that everyone gets a chance to. Yeah, I think I thing. do, and I think this is important to spend as much time on. Look, um, that sixteen-year-old Euler for the site includes housing. I just checked, and unfortunately, the only affordable housing in that Euler is voluntary on the part of the developer. So this is an opportunity for us to get to the bargaining table and have leverage. This is really important. Look, I I dream that that place could just be green space or green space and affordable housing if we can't find enough affordable housing out, elsewhere in the district. We now have Solo that has reached out to us, engaged. I think it's time to be inclusive and engage back instead of just trying to uh, go into a yes, no. I also, hold on, let me just check. I just pulled up the, um, there's no timeliness here. Um, it's at least seven weeks if you go to the casino state site when uh, the next 
a round of questioning back from the applicants is due. Um, I just think it's wonderful. I mean, we've been trying to get in touch with Tolo uh, for a while. Um, here they are willing to speak. Let's talk to them. There's no rush here to get this done tonight. Okay, noted, Kevin. Uh, I will say also that there is value in being proactive. Um, as you mentioned, we've never heard from the solo camp in quite some time, and it's uh, interesting that this came up uh, after we passed the resolution in committee. Um, we just heard from solo earlier this week, um, so I think there's also value in taking a strong stance. Uh, there's always opportunity to create, uh, to go through the public channel process of ULERP and, and things like that. It's just that if it gets to that point, as Brian mentioned, We've really lost our influence as the community board to take a strong stance on this and to draw the line in the sand for what we want. We can't um, be strong in a month. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, moving on to Michael. Hey, I just feel like there's nowhere. I'm just going to put this out there. I don't feel like our district can fit a casino. I just think it's attracts the things that we don't want in our community. Um, it, it does great for jobs. I think there's places in New York City where this would be perfect for you know, um, but I think it's just going to attract too much traffic. You know, also when the UN comes in for the General Assembly. Oh, Mike, you. Sorry, I'm good. When the UN comes in for the General Assembly, is it going to close down for that week? Are they going to be willing to, you know, I just think there's too many obstacles to come in into this area. I would love to see a vote tonight just to, you know, listen, if it votes, if it votes, yes. I think, I just think it's going to be so lopsided that we might as well take a vote tonight. It's my opinion. Appreciate it, Mike. Uh, Paige, is your audio working? All right, Paige, not seeing your audio. Uh, we'll go to Matt. Okay, it's on now. Go ahead, Paige. Well, I thought I was on before. I was on land use when this thing first, when Con Edison was still there, when the building was there. I lived in Tudor City for almost 50 years. And I look at this lot and I will tell you solo, never showed up a meeting, would never answer us. It's very surprising that a little head shows up now when he thinks he's gonna make a lot of money. That ULIP thing was signed off by our officials, which was um, Grodnick, Kavanaugh and Liz <clears throat> Kruger without knowing that we would be on summer break. So we had no say in signing off on that. Really what should have been put up there when they made the resolution, not only for apartment houses, but for a park, there was quite a few components. And if you ask any of those, they should know what was contained in that. There should be some records we have. Mm -hmm. I really feel that this should be turned down. This is not the place. Also right across the street from this lot is an air tunnel that controls the subways, the Long Island Railroad. And if anything should happen, it would be very dangerous. And for years, that has been a big concern in this community. All right, thank you very much, Paige. Yeah, and we also heard during the public session, um, 5,000 residents, uh, the representative of the board of directors. Um, let's move on. Uh, Anne, you have the floor. I think you're on mute, Anne. Uh, I'll come back to you, Anne. While you nope, I'm, oh, I'm here. Um, and I actually just... Um, want to kind of echo what uh, Kevin said, because I feel like I haven't yet heard anybody speak in favor of, yes, like let them go ahead and put a casino there. I think it's, I think it would be a total no brainer to vote against the development of this area as, as a no brainer, as a, like, nobody's going to vote for that tonight. Right. But I think that what um, might, what makes me hesitate to vote in support of this resolution um, is the idea that we have another month to, for a resolution, to create a resolution saying what we actually want there instead of 
like not just voting down this, but saying like, let's put something affirmative there. So I don't know. I mean, and I'm sorry, the reason I took me a little minute to, um, to unmute myself was I was wanting to look at the rezo itself, mm -hmm. um, which I think is mostly just like, this is a bad place for a casino. And I think if, if we can just adjust that to say um, what we need is public housing or, or uh, affordable housing, what we need is public space, what we want is this, that that might be um, express the wishes of the community better. Right. Thank you, Anne. Uh, as a reminder, the the January, which was passed in February resolution, did uh, discuss that. Also, this is one of those things that um, an additional resolution can be produced on as well if we want to go more in depth on what is uh, you know our, our different ideas. So this is not negating that. Um, Matt, go ahead. Matt Weintraub. Uh, just a quick question, if anyone can clarify, what do they mean by or other gaming facility? I'm assuming that still means gambling, right? Yeah. All right. That's a brief question. Just just. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Thank you. Um, Kevin, as I mentioned before, um, your, your point is noted. Uh, I want to. Oh, it's a different point. It's can oh, you read the Kevin, letter? From Kevin, you know, you're out of, Kevin, you haven't been recognized yet. I'm I want to get other speakers. Letty, you have the floor. Yes, uh, it's, it's very simple. Um, I mean, I am in opposition to, to the, uh, to the casino, but I, I don't, I'm on land use. I don't recall why it is that after a few months, we've had to pass another resolution when we already passed a resolution in opposition. What, I, I don't recall why, um, we're doing this again tonight, why we have to pass a second resolution when we already passed one. And I hope we could sort of wrap this up and vote because uh, it's getting late. No problem. So if you could answer yeah. that so just, question. Uh, yeah, so why? just to make the point, so the resolution that was passed in committee in January and that was then passed by the full board in February was about what we want to see there. Um, but it was in opposition to, to it, the casino. It, so what's it wasn't it, it was written because of opposition to the casino, but didn't explicitly state opposition to the casino. So your point is exactly why this resolution is being put there, because if you look at that resolution, it didn't explicitly state opposition to a casino. But it, but it, but it was it, I, I'm not arguing the point, but I'm just yeah. saying it was in opposition. I don't know why I, I am going to vote um, in favor of the resolution. I am opposed to the casino, but I, I just didn't understand. It's kind of unusual. And we're playing semantics here. But anyway, thank thank you very much for the explanation. I do can, appreciate that. Can we and just I, put up the I, other resolution as well? I also, I'd also you. like to know why a letter so important that came to the board on Monday was not circulated, was shared uh, by just- so the, letter, the letter that was sent on Monday was exactly what uh, he said today. Exactly. But we didn't, but we were not, we were not, we did not receive it. Right, because it wasn't something that was supposed to be sent out to the board. We don't just always send oh, out. Oh, really? To the oh, board. really? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was a request to have a meeting, so the land okay. use committee was aware of it. So we are setting up a time to meet with them. Okay, uh, fine. Yeah. All right, let's just move on. Let's just thank you, so, Kyle. Let's move on. Let's, thank you. on. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, Kyle, I don't know. This is B. Do you see my hand up? Yeah, we still have a couple more. So I was going to Majed next. Okay, but, thank you. I, I talking, can't see it. I'm on. Yeah, but since you're talking, do you want to just? Uh, yeah, let me just say, I'm in support of this resolution. I think it's from all aspects of it, um, transportation, sanitation, uh, especially transportation and stuff, and the vagueness of what we're dealing with. I think we need to have our position known right now that we're opposed to it. I'm delighted that they're coming to talk to us, but that does not change my feelings. Things are so sketchy that I think we need to take a stand, and this is the stand saying we're opposed, and then let's have the conversations and see what develops. Uh, we could always come back and change if the world changes overnight, which I don't think it will. All right, thank you, B. Majad. Thank you, and uh, I'm in agreement with B and uh, with what was said earlier. I live in Five Tudor City, uh, I'm Beige's uh, neighbor, and same, we've been hearing about this for months from the New York Post and some random blogs, but never from directly from the folks who will take on this project until 48 hours ago when we had already voted this. My neighbors have asked like, oh, you're on the land use committee for our board. Tell us like what's going on there. 
I don't know, guys, as much as you do. So that's why I am in favor of this. And I would like actually to make a motion to vote on the resolution we have. All right. Thank you. There's a motion. Um, Adam, you have your hand. hand. I'll second that. All right. So I did. So we are ending debate on this conversation. We'll move it to a vote. Read the letter. To the vote. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 3A. And while we vote on that, uh, Sandy, do you have a report? Um, yes, the next meeting, we're having a joint meeting with Housing and Homelessness, and we're going to be discussing all three levels of government um, who have proposed ideas for affordable housing. So the governor, the mayor, and um, our borough president. So we're, unfortunately, we're still a little slim on details of what the proposals are, um, but, and we, we will try and get as much information as we can, but uh, it's certainly worthy of debate at this point. So please feel free to attend and, and uh, there'll be a lot of information, I think, probably um, uh, more than people want, but it's, it's really a very meaty issue. And that's it. Oh, just, we did receive updates on the ESCR and on the, um, the Greenway extension. Unfortunately, the Greenway from 53rd up to 60th will not be open until December of this year. Um, the ESCR, Stuyvesant and Cove, as I mentioned, probably won't open very soon either because of security issues. There's only one entrance. Um, so both projects are moving forward, but not quite yet. We can't utilize them. So. All right. Thank you very much, Sandy. And we'll now move on to the Transportation Committee. Brian, you have the floor. Thank you. Our first resolution for consideration is no objection to a request for parking regulations enabling handicapped access 25 Tudor City Place. Um, the uh, board for Tudor, 25 Tudor City Place mentioned to us that there is no curb cut of any sort anywhere near the entrance to their building. And there's no interruption in parking either. There's no hydrants. There's no uh, natural features in the street. So not only do people have a hard time uh, getting up over the curb, but there's often no space between the cars that are parked in front of the building to allow people uh, to get into the building for drop offs unless they're dropped off a block away from the building. Uh, reasonably, they came to us asking if there was uh, something that we'd support. Uh, we went back and forth with them. Um, we told them that a typical uh, DOT uh, sort of uh, provision for this sort of thing, uh, although it's fairly rare, is a 20 foot no standing zone, which would be centered around their entrance. And uh, we presented a committee, we voted on it, we approved it, nine in favor, unanimous, and heard no public comment against it. Does anyone have any questions? All right, seeing no questions for 4A. We'll move it to a vote. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 4A. The next resolution for consideration requesting the installation of physical barrier and additional markings to prevent cars from parking in the no parking areas at intersections on 2nd Avenue. So I will explain this um, from a street design perspective that some of the corners on 2nd Avenue between 14th and 34th Street have what we call a pedestrian refuge area that is painted on the roadway. Um, some of the other intersections in our district that have protected bike lanes actually have raised curbs, but on 2nd Avenue, they have yet to install raised curb islands. It is just flush with the roadway. Um, in order to prevent incursions, DOT has put what they call flexiposts there. They are meant to be run over by cars and spring right back up, but they're supposed to deter cars from entering the refuge areas, uh, either when they're turning or when they're parking. As it turns out, we had several constituent uh, reports to the office that there are no barriers left. Uh, and it turned out because the drivers were running them over so much that they were just getting ripped out of the ground. Um, so we convened as a committee and with unanimous vote, we resolved that uh, we would like to see physical barriers along the model intersections that we noted, which were at 19th Street and 20th Street with the pedestrian refuges on the east side of the street. Uh, we also uh, extended that to request any other intersections with a similar design along that stretch. 
Um, we also requested that uh, DOT install standard design race pedestrian refuge island as a final resolution to this issue, which would be a capital improvement that is probably several years down the line. And we also requested it with this resolution to add crosswalk markings within the no parking areas so that pedestrian path is clearly visible to drivers and pedestrians. Does anyone have any questions? All right, not seeing any questions for 4B. So we'll move it to a vote. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 4B. And while people do that, do you wanna start on 4C? Yeah, this one's a meaty one. We're revisiting Third Avenue. Um, about two years ago, we voted on a resolution to uh, do a pedestrian forward, uh, have DOT consider a pedestrian forward redesign of Third Avenue between 25th and 32nd Street. Additionally, we shortly resolved after that to commission San Schwartz Engineering to produce a study and diagram of potential designs to uh, affect that kind of redesign because uh, SSE works with DOT frequently and would be able to pass that design along to them and get the process kick started. We are coming back to you with an additional resolution tonight to reaffirm our request for the design elements that we requested in the original resolution without being prescriptive to the Sam Schwartz engineering design. We have additionally asked for a class one protected bike lane to be added to the requests on that corridor. We're also asking DOT to study the feasibility of a bus lane along with these improvements, knowing that we're already kind of cramped in space with some of the pedestrian improvements that we're uh, asking for. And while we consider those to be top priority, we would also like to see buses move on this corridor without getting stuck up behind traffic. Um, we also requested that DOT study the addition of loading zones on the block end caps wherever it is possible, uh, including potentially on the Third Avenue side or on the side streets. Um, and uh, we, uh, it, it, we added an additional uh, clause that we want uh, DOT to come back to us uh, pretty soon with these sort of requests. And one of the uh, motivations for revisiting this issue is that DOT has started to redesign Third Avenue from 59th up to 96th Street. Um, and they intend to extend that redesign further south into our district uh, as, uh, as their um, planning and capital projects allow them to. And the design that they're installing mimics the bike lane on First Avenue, which includes very few, if any, pedestrian and uh, public space improvements. And so uh, we're hoping that they can do a little better than that. Does anyone have any questions? All right, any questions on 4C? Seeing none, we'll move it to a vote. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 4C. The next resolution we're presenting is about the intersection of East 57th Street and First Avenue. Uh, our committee has resolved to uh, reposition the traffic signals in the intersection to be set back um, so that they are solely visible from the near side of the intersection. And also that speed cushions be placed before the crosswalks on three sides of the intersection of East 57th Street and 3rd Avenue. Um, and these are to help with uh, turning traffic and, uh, and uh, safety improvements in terms of crossing pedestrians because uh, the reason this matter came to us is that this has been uh, noted to be a particularly dangerous intersection with injuries and deaths uh, among all the intersections in our district. This was raised by Councilmember Menon to our office. Uh, John, you have a question? Uh, first of all, I want to comp compliment you and the committee on this, on this resolution. Um, I live in the neighborhood, and indeed, when one is about to cross that street, one feels of any age that you're taking your life in your hands. Could you just help me visualize the setback? The cushion I can visualize. How would how would the traffic light setback work? And this is not a challenge. It's just to make no. That's okay. Understand it. Right now, the traffic lights are mounted so that if you're coming for if you're approaching from any particular direction, remember you can approach from two ways on 57th Street, and you can approach from the south on First Avenue. Um, the approach when you're approaching the intersection, the traffic light is that you can see is on the near side of the inter 
intersection right above the uh, stop line. It is not further back where you could get a better view of it. Or, uh, um... Yeah, I got it. I, oh, I uh, are that. we? Uh, l uh, let me ask um, Gabe because Gabe helped with drafting this. Gabe, am I getting that correct? That right now they are closer and we're sending them farther back. Yeah, that's correct. They'll be towards the driver as they approach. Closer to the driver as they approach. Oh, so they're going to be yeah. closer to the driver. I I described it in reverse. Um, this means that, and this is to, uh, in, in this particular arrangement of placing the traffic signals, means that approaching traffic can see the traffic signals, but uh, drivers who cross the boundary approaching the intersection that they're not supposed to cross will have trouble seeing the traffic light, which means that that they already know that, you know, that they're not in a position to safely uh, evaluate the intersection and the signals should they creep up too far. Uh, so hopefully this yeah. will be a deterrent for them to do such creeping. And this is a uh, this is sort of an international standard design. Uh, our the current design also is acceptable, but it this is something that may help with this particular intersection. Yeah, that's how I visualize. You might have misspoken. That's how I visualized it because you have the creep when you're crossing the street, and that this this would exactly stop that. Thank you very much. I mean, you're probably saving lives here. Any other questions, Michael? I just I actually have a question for John since he says he lives right there. Is 55th Street, would that be a, a, a decent street for the bus layover? I know that was one of the questions we had, right, Brian? I just want to make sure that 55th Street was a good street for the bus layover instead of 60th Street now. Oh, uh, this, oh. Isn't, um, this isn't in this part of this resolution. And we have it split in the two. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we right. have any other questions? No further questions for 4D. Uh, we'll end debate on that and move uh, to a vote. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 4D. The final resolution that we're presenting is a reconfiguration of the M57 bus so that rather than taking a loop route that goes up to 60th Street and comes back to 55th, the bus simply goes straight through First Avenue, goes to the end of 57th Street, and then uh, makes a right turn uh, without making a left turn at First Avenue through the most dangerous crosswalk of the intersection. Um, and uh, and we think that I mean we think that this would help with safety at this particular intersection and simplify the M57 route. Um, we know that there is a bus layover stop at 60th Street. We could not identify a, a critical uh, reason for a stop being at that location. There's no trans. There's no transit transfers. There's not a bus depot there or anything like that. It is just there. Um, so uh, in this resolution, we do not prescribe a particular area for a bus layover or a bus parking thing. We are assuming that DOT will uh, use their best judgment on this, but um, given the trade-off that's being made for safety in, in the intersection uh, at 57th and 1st, um, we wanted to advance this and uh, we can pin down some details on that later. Uh, Letty, you have your hand raised? Yes, I wanted to congratulate you and the committee on both of these resolutions. And also just to say that uh, parking these buses a layover on 55th Street would not be possible because there are three garage openings right on that street. But thanks for the resolutions. They're great. Okay. Okay. John? John? Yeah, I just wanted to address Michael's question. I. I used to live on 55th Street and it is well trafficked with those garages, uh, but I don't consider myself an expert on choosing between 55th or 60th, but I, I would make the same observation as Levy just made. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so let's end debate on 4D, I'm sorry, 4E, and uh, we'll move it to a vote. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 4E. 
And Brian, anything additional? Any additional? I do have two items for a report for you. Um, note that we had some items that we discussed at committee, which will uh, come up again, including some discussion on that crash that uh, took out the dog run on the East River Greenway. Uh, glad to hear it's back open. Um, so the issues that I wanted to address, um, one, we talked about this briefly at the meeting. Um, they are going to be rerouting F trains out of the 63rd Street Tunnel into the 53rd Street Tunnel for a few months. Uh, for most people in the district, this will work out fine. Um, it should be noted that in order to facilitate that change during rush hour, during the weekday, the volume on E trains and M trains will be somewhat reduced in order to allow for the capacity of the F trains that are now sharing that tunnel. That will result in slightly longer headways for specifically E and M trains at that station, although it will be well served by all three lines during the work period. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up is that there was a follow up on a uh, item which we passed at a resolution uh, last month. Uh, it was for intro 501 that is before the council and this was a program to allow for uh, uh, user submitted enforcement for certain roadway violations in regards to parking and blocking bike lanes or whatnot. This bill was going to allow users to log on their phone, submit pictures of violators, and then uh, generate automated tickets in the mail. Um, this bill has essentially been gutted and represented as a bill that allows for some submission of these uh, violations. Um, the uh, original presentation of a 25% reward to the submitters has now been taken out of the legislation. Uh, it now turns out that in order for someone to uh, qualify to submit these things, they have to take a course, which you do not have to do for any of the other programs, which uh, uh, involve user submitted enforcement. Uh, another thing is that they have built into the law a very slow rollout period in which this would not be implemented in our district for years. Um, there are other problems that we noted with this. Uh, we wanted to invite some uh, legislators uh, that were involved with this from the council uh, to speak with us at our last meeting and they were not able to come. Uh, we are hoping to uh, push for something to be passed here uh, because these are to enforce violations that are actually already against the law. This is not extending traffic law in any way to, uh, to create new violations for drivers. It is simply adding to the enforcement of uh, pernicious issues that we're already faced with in the district. And uh, it is not a good sign that this bill is getting bounced around with a lot of things getting ripped out of it and a lot of uh, uh, difficulties being added to the user submission process. And given that there's also such a low enforcement rate by this of police officers and uh, patrol officers at the moment, uh, you know, it just doesn't send a good signal. We need order on the streets. We need people to observe the parking regulations. Uh, we need DOT to install loading zones if they're needed, if there are people who cannot find places to safely load their cars. And we're just not heading in that direction. We're just heading toward more chaos, more logging and uh, more injuries and deaths. Uh, I see some hand raised. Let's start with Larry. Uh, I would move to um, have the board reconsider this uh, previous vote on the resolution since the um, legislation has material been, been changed. Uh, we don't have to. It's now presented as 501A, so there will be no uh, there will be no confusion that we endorse the wrong resolution. Well, I, 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 I want to be clear that we are not supporting 501A. We don't have a position on it. Right, we don't. We supported 501. It's essentially been rescinded. Okay. Uh, let's move on to Mike. Thanks, Kyle. One of the things, um, if, this ever, if this ever does get passed, to take into consideration is whoever handles the tickets, Right now for the idling, I believe it's the EP, and they seem very overwhelmed. And sometimes you're getting these tickets two years after that ha happens. So if this does turn into a, where the agency is so overwhelmed, you know, the general public are going to be getting tickets two years and one year. And this is something that before they do have this bill, it's something they have to consider that they have to have the agency bulked up with staff to handle all these 
um, videos or pictures or whatever it may be. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mike. Um, Brian, you're all set? I'm all set, thank you guys. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to business affairs and licensing. Claire? Hello, everyone. Um, I see Anne's hand up and Brian's hand up. Brian, go ahead. Hello. Hello, Anne, are you seconding? Uh, no, actually, I'm raising a question um, about 913 Watami at 913 Second Ave. I'm, I'm happy to bundle B and C. I'm not sure the vote on that's faster than just voting on them individually. But um, 913 Second Avenue, um, I don't know if you want me, Kyle, I'm not sure you want me to, or Claire, I'm not sure you want me to talk about it or if you want to do procedural yeah, so, uh, stuff. To make, your, make your comment on it and then maybe afterwards. Okay. On um, one. This is a problematic location, which you may not be aware of. I, I literally can place an order right right now from that location um delivery only which is the sign of a ghost restaurant um and it is actually a location that i have noted as a ghost restaurant for the last couple of years if if you guys think that um would Tommy opening there as an actual like physical restaurant um means that there will be one less ghost restaurant operating i am all for it but i am concerned it's just adding another layer of ghostitude no so the principal is there in addition to their lawyer and it's definitely going to be operating as a full service restaurant okay. they have I, uh, okay. restaurants across can the i place. ask can I ask you or the board office, did they have a timing as to when they're gonna open? Did, I don't know I, if that's a question you ask ask. generally. Yeah. Um, is, there, is there a way for us to check in, like put it on somebody's tickler file to say like, hey, in three months from now, like I will do this mentally, but it would be better if it was more institutional to see if there is in fact, because I literally like somebody is running a Chinese restaurant, not from there. The, re the food is probably coming from Brooklyn on, you know, an electric bike with a you know, an, an yeah, illegal battery. That, yeah. We'll have the office check. Yeah. So, uh, Susan, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say that we should not be bundling E. That's a completely different okay. animal from the others. Okay. Um, Adam, you had your hand up or you're down now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was going to second whatever sort of bundle uh, potentially is still on the table. Right. And my bundle was for A through D, uh, just the on uh, the liquor applications. Okay, so if there's any objection to bundling A through D, please raise your hand. Yeah, could, could, could we do just do B through D? Because I'm gonna vote against A. Oh, God. Okay, um, I think for the purpose of the ballot, you can you can mark your vote for A, but for the purpose of us discuss, like moving to a vote, um, doesn't mean that all of the, uh, all of your responses are the same. Um, all right, so we're bundling A through D. So please go to your digital ballot and mark your vote for A, 5A through 5D. Please do not mark your vote for 5E just yet. All right, and so while people do that, um, Claire, do you wanna give a, just a brief description of 5E and answer yes. any questions, yeah. Yeah, so this was um, a collaboration and kind of started from um, when Kyle was the chair of this esteemed 
committee uh, and he built a relationship with the um, New York Civil, Civil, Civil Liberties Union who um, was obviously does a lot of different campaigns, but one campaign that they were focusing on is the Massage License, License Decriminalization Act. And you all have the resolution um, in front of you, but you know, in terms of like licensed professions in New York, um, massage um, professionals really are the only ones who are prosecuted or get in trouble for like um, operating without a license. So we thought that this, you know, aligned with the committee and um, it was basically unanimous. Uh, if anyone has any questions or if Kyle wants to follow up or Susan also was helpful with the um, resolution as well. Uh, I see we have a hand up from Stu. Stu, go ahead. Uh, either there's a typo or I'm misunderstanding something. On line 62, mm -hmm. um, it says that the bill will read, will bring unlicensed massage work to parity with other unlicensed professions. I think that's supposed to read with other licensed professions, right? No, I think it's, um, so the whole idea behind the resolution and the act is that Right now, uh, to be unlicensed in this particular field um, results in more criminal penalties than other license, uh, whether, whether you are unlicensed in the other um, fields. So right now, what they want to do is because massage, uh, being not licensed in massage, is done at such a higher rate than any other profession, I believe out of the 36 that are licensed, it's the most uh, criminalized. Uh, that they want to bring it to the same sort of level as you know any sort of criminalization for any other field uh, that there might be. But no, no, I'm sorry, I'm still not understanding. <clears throat> what uh, massage work is supposed to be licensed. Correct. What they're saying is, if you're practicing unlicensed, then that should be no more of a penalty than if you were practicing in any other licensed protection profession without a license. Correct. Okay. Right. That's not how that reads. It's saying bring it, brings it to the work to parity with other unlicensed professions. What it should be saying is bring it to parity with other licensed professions. We're also, you know, if you practice unlicensed. OK, uh, I see what you mean, actually. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Can you get out uh, where it says with other unlicensed? Can you just take out the U.N.? Yeah, because you're saying the other occupations that don't require licenses, we don't want to be parity criminalization of that. I get it. Yeah. Okay. That's an edit. All right. Any uh, seeing no further questions on 5E, we'll end debate there and we'll move it to a vote. So please go to your digital digital ballot and mark your vote for 5E. All right, and while people are doing that, Claire, do you have any report or? Um, no, I have a, you know, Anton kind of got us started to talk about, um, excuse me, open restaurants again last meeting. And then we got a few more um, updates since then. So I think that we'll continue to have that as an agenda item. Um, but other than that, I'll say that's my report. Or Anton mm -hmm. wants to add something, so I'll hand it over to him. Yeah, basically my report was there's nothing to report and I was still following up and hopefully I'll get a little bit more information for the next meeting. Awesome, all right. Thank you very much, Anton. So we'll now move on uh, to housing and homelessness. Rich, do you have a report? Uh, no, I'm gonna waive my report. Um, uh, we're meeting together with Sandy. Uh, in uh, three weeks, and you are all welcome uh, on Monday, Monday the 27th, to talk about state, uh, uh, city, and borough housing uh, planning. All right. Thank you very much, Rich. We'll now move on to budget and governmental affairs. Reshma, do you have a report? Yes. Thank you, Kyle. Um, our meeting this month is next week on Monday the 13th, and um, we're going to be 
discussing um, the legalization of basement and cellar apartments that Assemblymember Harvey Epstein had mentioned um, when he spoke. And um, we have, uh, this is, you know, something we've talked about with land use and the housing uh, committee as well as it is regulated. And we have someone coming uh, from a nonprofit uh, that ran a pilot program um, to learn more about this. All right. Thank you very much, Reshma. We'll now move on to Health and Human Services. Elvi, do you have a report? Uh, Kyle, I'm waving my report. All right. Thank you very much, Elvi. We'll move on to youth and education. John, do you have a report? I'll join the parade and uh, wave my report. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to public safety. Matt, do you have a report? Uh, Matt's not here today. Hi, it's Seema. He's not here today, but as vice chair, he just asked me to say a few words sure. um, as part of our report. So the first is that we actually had a discussion um, with the police precinct regarding shelter security at the New Providence Women's Shelter on at 225 East 45th Street. There was um, an altercation okay. that happened there, I believe late last year that resulted in, in um, a, a resident's death. Um, so we had a conversation with the police. However, DHS was invited to attend. Uh, they were not able to, and so we're giving them until um, our March meeting to attend. Um, and just for everyone who's interested in this topic, um, our March meeting is March 16th. Um, and then we discussed um, Governor Hochul's State of the State address and specifically looked at um, her mental health proposals that were put forward. And so we'll be following, you know, how those get funded through the budget season. Uh, but that's it. All right. Thank you very much, Sima. Uh, and now I'll turn it over to Jesus. Thank you, everyone. Well, as I mentioned in my report, um, we need to pass a resolution in order to hire a staff member. Uh, Jesus, your audio is, is uh, muffled. My apologies for that. Is this better? Yes, much better. Yep. Well, like I mentioned in my report uh, earlier in the meeting, um, we need to pass a resolution in order to fill a vacant position that we have in the office. Uh, so unless there are questions, um, I would... Uh, I imagine the chair would look kindly on someone presenting this from the floor and then voting this in. So moved. It, it's already on the floor. Mm -hmm. oh. Yep. We didn't come out of a committee, but uh, we'd love to have a we, vote on we, we have an agenda that we adopted, so it's on the agenda. Right then. Okay. So are there any questions about 11A? All right, seeing none, I'll end the debate and move it to a vote. So please go back to your digital ballot and mark your vote for 11A. And once you have made your vote for 11A, you can now hit submit. Okay, and with that, we're now at old or new business. So board members, if you have any old or new business to state, please raise your hand through Zoom. Uh, Sandy, go ahead. I, I just wanna briefly add that I put the information that we do have from city planning regarding the solar site into the chat. Um, and we have foiled the drawings so we can see exactly what the proposal looks like, but that is the proposal. That, or that's what was approved by city planning. So if people want to take a look at that. Thank you. All right, so we'll now move to the second roll call. There's a new one. Members, I will call on you for the second roll call. If you have not submitted your ballot, please do so now. If you're unable to use the digital ballot, I'll ask you for your vote on each of tonight's resolutions. Okay. 
So going in reverse, Ronnie White. Not here. He's not here. Wong. Present. Matthew Weintraub. Present. Brian Van Nieuwenhoven. Present. Gabriel Terzo. Present. Mark Thompson. Present. Susan Steinberg. Present. Hannah Singleman. Present. Betty Simon. Present, and I'm in favor of all the uh, the resos. Okay. I will submit um, your ballot on your behalf. Thank you. No problem. Yes. Aisha Siddiqui. Present. Sandra Sherrod. Present. Seema Shaw. Present. Lou Sapersky. Uh, Ann Seligman. Uh, present. I also been despite my mean comments, I'm also voting in favor of everything. And I um, also just want to comment on all the S's here. Like, we should have like a caucus of S's. <laughs> uh, Larry Shire. Also an S, but I'm president. I'm not president. <laughs> president. I'm president. <laughs> Marking you as president. <laughs> Matt Roberts is absent. Uh, Reshma Patel. Present. Okay, Kevin O'Keefe. I'm not president, and I'm here. Uh, Rajesh Nayar. Present. Okay. Uh, Richard Mintz. Present. Sandra McKee. Present. Anton, Anton Molnar. Present. Jason Lipman. Present. Sandra Leftoff. Present. Aver Abigail Kruzbark. Nadim Kalani. Present. John Keller. Present. Paige Judge. Present. Sadie Howard. Present. Adam Harkey. Present. Eric Goldberg. Present. Jason Fromowitz. Present. Beatrice Disman. Beatrice? President, do you hear me now? I do hear you now, marking you as Thank president. You. Michael Devereaux. Present. Stu Desser. Here. Jonathan Derrico. Present. Jim Collins. Blair Brennan. Present. LB Barroso. Present. Martin Barrett. Present. Neil Barclay. Present. Althad. Present. Ajid Abdul Samad. Present. Okay. Ready accounted for. I believe everyone accounted for has voted. Yes, it looks that way. Okay, and move on to the vote counts. So for the uh, bylaws, resolution 1A, there is uh, 39 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstain, zero not entitled. The resolution passes. Uh, resolution 2A for parks. There is uh, 39 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained, zero not entitled. The resolution passes. Land use waterfront 3A. Uh, 33 in favor, four opposed, one abstained, one not entitled. The resolution passes. Transportation, resolution 4A. In favor, 37 in favor, one opposed, zero abstained, one not entitled. The resolution passes. Transportation Resolution 4B, 38 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained, one not entitled. The resolution passes. Transportation Resolution 4C, 38 in favor, one opposed, zero abstained, one not entitled. The resolution passes. Transportation Resolution 4D, 
38 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained, one not entitled. Resolution passes. Resolution, uh, transportation resolution 4E, 37 in favor, zero, uh, one opposed, zero abstained, one not entitled. The resolution passes. Uh, resolution uh, 5A, business and licensing. Um, 39 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained, zero not entitled. Uh, resolution 5B, 39 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained, zero not entitled. Resolution passes. Resolution 5C, 39 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained, zero not entitled. Resolution passes. Resol Resolution 5D, 39 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained, zero not entitled. Resolution passes. Resolution 5E, 37 in favor, one opposed, zero abstained, one not entitled. The resolution passes. Personnel, uh, resolution 11A, 39 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained, zero not entitled. It too passes. That rounds out all the resolutions for tonight. All right, thank you very much, Steve. And thank you to the entire board for a busy, busy night. If there are no objections, we will adjourn the meeting. Seeing no further business, the meeting is adjourned at 8.57 p.m.